welcome to another Ride Along with Goggles. And today we're up in, uh, oh, we're out in the Thule's, uh southeast, southeast, southeast of Merritt, B.C., uh, which is fitting. It's Canada Day today, and as you watch this, it's just a country north of the U.S. that's hung over. <laughs> it's what you're going to see is it's, uh, I'm, I'm doing this on Saturday, which is our big, you know, the big annual party and uh anyway um what i want to do this this job's a little urgent and i'm going to just take you guys and show you the various loads that can be had on this particular trailer and we're going to talk a little bit a bit about trailers on this trip and i think it's going to be interesting so let's uh go to the we're going to go to the content browser and now i've got the uh, ironworks w900 here but I've got the Globe trailer from uh, Pinga, and we used it in the last video, but I didn't pay it much attention. And I want what I want to do is show you guys some of the loads that you can put on this trailer and how the game, like the, these guys are putting these trailers that are really upping the game on cargo and load binding and whatever. Like the, the colors, meh, that's not cat yellow, but... Uh, when we look, we look at the load binders. These ones are a little big. I think the Pizder trailer, the Rogers has a better scale on the uh, load binders, and uh, you typically would, generally, we're going to crank them and leave that lever down. I would believe, but I don't know. It's it's funny they're all up at the same angle. It's weird. But what I want to do is look at some of these cargos for this trailer, and uh, just tell you know how. They're just getting better and better. And funny thing with this trailer is there's no sideboards out here, but I think we're going to see it on a few. And, uh, you know, once again, all the lines are all properly routed and electrical and air. And uh, it's got the little mesh flags on the on the wide parts of the cargo, which is correct. And uh, let's look at the next uh, item. So a really nicely detailed D5 Caterpillar. Like, I mean, what's not to like about that? Holy, look at the detail in it. It's beautiful. And, um, yeah, it's really looking good. Nice ripper on the back. Got the shovel there for you. <laughs> you think, well, how's he going to dig himself out? Well, he's not. He's going to use that to clean in here, clean the undercarriage at the end of the day, get all the dirt out of here as best he can, uh, or at least he should be. He's a good operator, but I me mean, just look at the detail in there under the behind the screen. Everything that's going on in there, all the cylinders, lines, fittings, uh, case excavator. It's one of the rubber tracked ones. So this is uh, you would see this. You see these uh, a little more common nowadays, and uh, they look a little goofy, but it's a rubber track, and uh, the whole purpose is to. Uh, go easy on the uh, asphalt you see them in town you know digging a hole in the street or whatever and not chewing up the street they're on Let's see what's next Wait a oh yeah this is an extended uh, reach these are uh, they, they kind of you see a lot where they're doing drainage canals and or ditches like you'd see in the wetter parts of the southern eastern u.s and stuff and digging out drainage ditches and uh they're not gonna have a huge scoop on them because that's a long way away <laughs> that's a that's a long reach so you don't want to get too much weight out far um, oh and look at this this is a grain cart and this is like right out of farm sim but i mean look at the detail on this thing It's just amazing. Wow. Let's see what's next. Now this John Deere tractor is spectacular. And once again, this looks like it's right out of Farm Sim. I don't even know. Maybe it's got more detail than Farm Sim has. It just looks fantastic. Like the amount of detail on the uh, all the hydraulics and everything. Whoever's putting these mods together has got to 
a labor of love going on here. They're really liking what they're doing and they're going all in. That's a beauty. Man. Unbelievable. Now the next one is not and like I said, John Fear. <laughs> but this is a real you know, eyesore. Oh no, not this one. It's coming up. This one's okay. Track's nice. It's steel track. Steel grousers. Uh, flags once again. Oh, and this one has the outriggers out on the trailer. That's cool. And maybe this is, is this a thing that's, I don't know. There's, oh, this thing's an abomination. Uh, we just skip, we forget we even saw that. And this thing is a sprayer. And it's dirty, but the yellow on the wheels is way off. And uh, maybe it's because it's dirty. See, you know, I mean, it's it's nice, but uh, just what we got here. Komatsu Grader, an open cab. Rops, rollover protection structure. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's okay. It's not as stunning as that uh, 9RX. So here's uh, the base for that load we took the other day when we took that Lieber uh, draw works. But that's the base. That's quite something. I got to see how heavy that is. And this is what we took yesterday. Here's the track, one track for that thing. So you can see where it would attach to the base here. There and there, there and there. Pretty cool. Uh, what else we got? Hmm. Now that's the uh, part of the uh, uh, boom structure or derrick or whatever you call it. Pretty cool. And this is the top end of it. Once again, nicely done. So I guess let's see oh that's an old one looks like an old one reworked we don't spend much time on that and this is the one we've got on right now Manitowoc talk you got it at 99,000 pounds which I guess that's sort of reasonable it doesn't have the Derek and uh, doesn't have the weights on it so all the counterweights are missing on the back and that's on another cargo let's see if that's gonna show up Oh, here's that link belt. Like this is pretty nice. Tracked crane. Very nice. Got a whole lot going on. Kind of busy at the, <laughs> the tie down here. But uh, it's nicely done. Tiger cat. This is a feller buncher for felling trees. And once again, nicely done. And. Uh, Really nice. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, oh, a Versatile. Now, the collars are off a bit, but a Versatile tractor is kind of cool for if you're a Canadian, because this is a Canadian outfit. I don't know if they still are. I don't think so. But it was originated in Winnipeg, Manitoba. It was the origins of that company. And uh, anyway, so we'll leave it there and get driving here. And we're going to talk all about what these trailers and something I want to do coming up uh, in the future here is... Uh, wow, that dash is bright with the light coming in on it the way it is. What I'd like to do is... Uh, Oh, just look at our weight, 99,000. Uh-oh, put in gear, dude. And we don't have a really long trip, so that's why, kind of why I took the, a little bit of time to look at the cargos. Is, um, there's this trailer, there's Pisters Rogers that just came out, and uh, I believe we did a trip with it the other day. And what I'm gonna do one of these days and I want to give Pizder a chance because, I mean, his trailer's brand new. 
and he's still working on the cargos. So he's got some updates coming. And what I'd like to do is uh, get the Ironworks GSL, which is a trailer that comes with this truck. And so the GSL, this uh, Globe from Pinga, and the Rogers from um, Pister, and just do a little sort of review and. I don't know, maybe even a build video or just get a little look at them in closer detail because I kind of gloss over it all the time. Like I'll throw on a, a really cool load on a really cool trailer and just hop in the truck and drive. And we don't we don't talk about the trailer very much. And I think these guys who are building these trailers now, they just look in there, all the detail crazy I don't think uh, I've given them the credit they're due and uh, I think they need to uh, give them a shout out now the last time I drove this truck I had a, a DD60 Detroit in it. After 100 yards, turn left. But I put a. I wanted to hear that C16 again. That we had in uh, yesterday's video. Yeah, I was poking fun at my friend Dave uh, last week in a video or so. He's my uh, friend that is colorblind. And uh, he used to drive these Manitowics up in uh, the Arctic. In, uh, I guess you could call it our, the Canadian equivalent to Prudhoe Bay would be Tuktiak Tuk. We got a brakes. Got a brake check here. Oh well. That's a good looking outfit. <laughs> Patience, dude. My word. Should accelerate pretty good downhill here. That runaway straight ahead. That looks like from out here. Yeehaw. I tempted to just go flying down one of those things once, but I I don't know, there's something about it. Just doesn't seem right. It'll make a big mess of your truck. I 
gotta lean on here. Oh boy. Yeah. We got the soft suspension going here. I'll have to be careful with this one. Don't let it get away from us. to mention where we're going. Uh, we're going to uh, Wenatchee uh, in Washington. So we've got a border crossing here. Let's we'll see how that's going to go with this crane. It should be all right. I'd like to do a, uh, I think I'm really tempted to do a uh, build and drive with this truck. Because it has so many uh, options and stuff. It's just unbelievable. I think it would be pretty cool. So for Canada today, I think uh, we did, uh, didn't do a whole bunch, but I uh, took the car out this morning, the caddy, and gave it a real good washing and wiped it all down real good. Hasn't looked as good as it does right now. Quite a while since I got it this clean. I try and keep it clean, you know, but I drive it a lot, so it gets dirty. I'm just going to go up beside that uh, black swan truck. I'll see what he's got pulling it. Hey, he's not got a black swan skin pulling it. There goes a Southwest Motor Transport without a Southwest trailer. What's going on here? Uh-oh, we're going through. Oh, he's going to go through too. You go right there, that's up the hill to that uh, BHP site, which is kind of a fun little road. We got a light here. So John uh, was mentioning that I should use a bow tie, bow tie bowser. Oh boy, let's start that again. One of our viewers, John, was saying I should get the bow tie visor and you could get better visibility out of it. Yeah, it's probably true, but I, I'm not, uh, I'm not a little fart. I kind of stuck in my ways and <laughs> I, uh, I just find them kind of weird looking. I wonder if we got to turn right here. Sit right here. Keep right. Yeah, wow. After 50 yards, turn right. I wonder what this is going to be like. Oh, look at that. <laughs> turn right. That's the first time I've seen that with the wheels going around yet. I think any time I've seen them moving, well, not the tractors, but the combine harvester moving in the game. It's generally got the, uh-oh, uh ooh, that was close. Uh, 
You don't often see the wheels turning, I don't think. Uh-oh. Let's try that again. Do a reset. Guess I'll stay in this lane. For now, we gotta get over there, though. Getting steamrolled by all these cars. Yeah, build and drive with this truck would be cool. Go straight. It's got a lot of things you can customize, like that uh, cell phone up there with the uh, recognize the uh, cowgirl from the back of the Hell Creek Ranch uh, um, cow wagon. And then the wood dash is one that I did. It's a custom thing. Then we got uh, mud flaps you can do, and there's some other stuff. I oh, what is it? There's more that I could do yet that I haven't. Uh oh, I just turned yellow. Couldn't see it, the officer. It's this goofy visor my co-driver put on my truck. Oh, the gauge. Uh, I gotta do something like that. I think I'm going to... Uh, the gauge uh, backdrop or background for the gauges, you can do your own. So, I think I'm going to do that. I wonder if the uh, model, the, the instability of this truck, oops, is coming from the uh, raised chassis and higher center of gravity. isn't very stable. We got a doozy of a corner coming up here too. thing over. Yeah, this could be one that we're late on. I haven't been late in a long time, but...
There's a uh, Big Sky Trucking trailer in front of us. Can't see the truck. I guess they're kind of in the lane. And is that uh, ATS expansion from Recon ever growing and uh, getting really interesting? Hit this in the middle. This different uh, height of this uh, truck kind of messes me up for my center line. Or sorry, trying to find the center of the lane. Because this thing's pretty high in the air compared to the default uh, height. I took a good look at the old documents there. Oh, is anybody coming over there? Doesn't look like it. Washington. Yeah, might have to uh, think about firming this truck up a little bit uh, in the suspension settings. What, what I think I should do is I got, in this profile, I got um, two of these Ironworks W900s without the Ray chassis, and I have two. With yards, turn right. A two with the Ray chassis and... Uh, might good to right. be good at driving back to back and compare the uh, stability and see if they do model that uh, chassis height. Could do that as part of a build and drive video. Build a uh, sort of a custom sort of showy truck kind of thingy and uh, one work truck. Build them and drive them. See what happens. Keep right. Out 50 yards. Go straight. Go straight. Keep right. After 50 yards. Go straight. Oh man, could have come up there just a little slower. 
Try not to mess with the clutch. Well, it's been a while since we've uh, been straight on out this way. Uh, taken the uh, trip off to the left there quite a bit, which is a nice drive as well. I guess um, another big shout out to uh, new subscribers because been um, joining at a pretty furious rate. It's uh, well, kind of amazing to see. This um, it's not that long ago uh, we hit a uh, thousand subscribers and we're pushing uh, just, I don't know, a hundred, just a few shy of uh, 2,000 now, so that's really nice, and I really appreciate it. I think this light is, oh, it's red right now. I don't remember the last time I caught it red. Must be because I've been going Go straight. wobbling along there. Probably missed a light cycle. Yeah, we missed the train too. Look, there it is up there. You usually get a look at that train. I guess I'm going too slow. Yeah, I don't have the pivot cam working for some reason. Maybe it just doesn't work with this truck. I've got it enabled. I've got it configured in the uh, key bindings, but uh, no joy. So I am enjoying the C16. Like I said, I'm running it back to back just to uh, see if I really, because I was real happy with it yesterday. Oh man, look at the lean angle on this thing. Ooh. I wonder, it almost be worth just going in and firming up the sliders, uh, suspension. But we got 55 miles to go, it's no biggie. I actually caught the train. Oh, and the other thing I didn't do is take a photo. Uh, this is no time to be messing around with the photos. Oh, yikes. Oh, boy. That's frightening. How unstable this thing is. I guess what I should be doing is dropping the seat a little bit. Like if I was down here. Uh, be able to see beyond that visor a little better.
it's funny, you know, anytime you get in a new truck or whatever else and you're trying to figure out the, uh, like, I mean, real life, and uh, you're trying to figure out the size of it, and uh, you're all up on the wheel, kind of, you know, trying to see over the hood, and then after you got a few hours in it, it just ceases to be an issue. You just, you learn the size of the box you're driving, right? doesn't take long. It always seems daunting at first, or if you get in a new piece of equipment, like, I've actually driven a 980 uh, cat loader once, and man, that thing was so freaking big. <laughs> you couldn't see anything on the other side of the bucket. Like, I mean, it was just insane. But, oh, hang on there, oh. Uh, you pretty quickly sort of learn the extents of the machine. And it's the same with the truck. And after a while, you're driving, you know, you can see the space out there. You know the space you're driving. And it's a dawdle, like, after a while. Like, it just, it doesn't take long. It's, and you must see that in the game if you haven't driven a truck in real life. You must just see when you're playing the game that after a little while you go, oh yeah, this is, I've got room here, I can do this, I can fit there. And I guess what I'm talking, the whole reason I'm mentioning this is you can drop the seat down a little bit and you don't, once you start to get used to it, you don't need to be so up on the wheel to get your comfort level. So, I've driven this one enough to know it that uh, I could drop the seat a bit and not get in any trouble. So the whole home garage is around here somewhere. Where is it? There's where we're going. We're going to that Home Depot right down there. I'm pretty sure is where this is going. Gotta let, gotta let me go over there. I think we're going to turn right in front of the home garage here. Oh no, it's on that side of the intersection. Turn left. Yeah, there's the home garage over there. On the right. I haven't been in that garage in a long time. Yeah, you can see the height of the chassis. I'm just wondering if... Uh, Oh, the, uh, we'll save it for a build and drive. There's some other stuff I wanted to point out on this truck, but I think I really do got to do that build and drive. Excuse me. It's some of the cool features of it. So I'm thinking, where did I see that? There's Maybe it was one of the other trailers I was looking at that had a Manitowoc uh, jib, so not the jib, the main crane boom sections and the weights, the counterweights. I'm surprised it wasn't uh, in this one because the other trailer didn't have the the crane as a cargo. It just had the boom and the counterweights. It's kind of weird. Well, we got a couple more tight corners here and we're home free. It goes an old school and a mulligans up there in the, on the highway. Oh, pay attention here, I'll be running stuff over.
So be turning right up there. Oh, well, got my high beams on. Nobody behind us. It got the uh, strobes in the headlights. It's kind of interesting. Still nobody coming up the inside. corner here you have reached your destination you gonna clear that post oh yeah we got lots of room we've got to get on the trigger here at some point so there we go this uh, may take a little do and getting in the yard here okay around the back around the back <laughs> That's going to be close. Like those chassis bolts, you can paint them or you can make them chrome or black or... There's so many options with this truck. Let's get a look at what we got going on here. Well, shouldn't be too bad. to go that way any yeah, we're going to be a little wide here so we're going to end up doing a pull up here Three stabs at it. That'll do. We go all the way back to the dock? I don't think so. Not that they're gonna... <laughs> oh, that's funny. Not that we're gonna be offloading it here at the dock. Well, I guess we... Uh, it comes off the front anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. They're gonna drive it around in the parking lot a little bit. That's not terrible. We didn't go very far, 224 miles, 66 gallons. And uh, yeah, great trip, great truck, man. I just, I guess my big beef is the, uh, my only complaint is the visor. There's so many other options, like 
mirrors and bumpers, all kinds of different grills. You can do the the A style front fenders or hood. Um, got uh, different versions of this, different winches. There's two of them. Uh, try to ride, try drive. Uh, high chassis, medium or low. Uh, different sleeper options. That's not to like. Um, yeah, and I would imagine it's only going to get better. I, you know, if uh, they keep working on it. So, congrats to uh, Outlaw for this great truck. Anyway, uh, appreciate. Oh shoot! You know what? I never did take a photo. <laughs> oh well, I'll figure something out. But uh, as always, guys, appreciate you following along. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, we're kind of growing this thing, which is kind of exciting too. And um, wouldn't be here without you. So thanks for that, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.